Right, so um, this um, topic, 50 Shades of New Normal, I'm actually going to go through 50 different things that we have to cope with. Uh, I've broken it up into three parts. Uh, this part here is looking at the society and politics behind what companies have to do. It's good for the companies to understand the political ramifications because some of these issues uh, have major impacts for companies. Uh, for example, I'll be talking about uh, Donald Trump going to ban WeChat, okay? And that's going to cut out 1.2 billion people of Chinese background from uh, accessing Western markets. But not only that, it will cut Western companies from accessing those markets. So it's going to be a huge change. And we have to look at the politics and the societal changes that are happening before we look at our own um, environment and our opportunities and threats. OK, so why this seminar is important? Everyone in the world, from the richest tycoon to the poorest peasant, knows that the world changed radically in March 2020. It's not something that any of you do not know. Everyone knows this. Businesses are grappling to adjust to this new reality. Of course, the immediate need is survival. There are some companies that are actually prospering, but many of them are just learning to survive. Some country governments have helped companies to survive for a little while by pumping money to these companies. But once that money is over, they have to figure out what they're going to do with it. Now, beyond these immediate needs, businesses also need to plan to adjust for an alternate reality. It is not like a silver bullet is going to suddenly come in the form of a vaccine. They're already talking about mass production. But it doesn't mean that once the silver bullet appears, that we will reset the world into the 1st of January, 2020. We had a lovely 31st night celebration. And then we entered 2020, did not realize that the world was going to change very fast. So it is very, very unlikely that the world will reset. So we have to get ready for this new reality. That is why we are much of what we are living today, what we are going through today, most likely will continue to be the new normal of tomorrow. So in trying to look at our business strategies, we need to have a holistic understanding of the new external environment and the opportunities and threats that go with it. So essentially, we need to do a SWOT analysis okay, of what, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get my, okay. Um, one minute to pin my video. Okay, right. So we really need to do a SWOT analysis of the situation today. In other words, the opportunity is stressed by looking at the external environment and then look inside us to look at what are the strengths we have to take advantage of the opportunities. There are opportunities in this, as you can see from this very seminar that we're having. Zoom has had a significant opportunity for its business. And of course, what are the weaknesses that we have that may be a problem given the threats? So that is essentially the reason why this seminar is important. Okay. So let's start. Now, as I told you, there are three parts. Part one is going to look at the social and political issues. Part two, about economics. And that's going to be next week. And then part three, about the interconnection, the global interconnection, the supply chains, and the climates, and so on. Okay, so essentially, even before COVID-19 or the coronavirus hit us, there was signs and warnings that a major disruption was around the corner. But we were not worried about it too much because they were not immediate, right? We had doomsday scenarios of the future that required, you know, looking at the not so distant future, but not immediate crisis management. And the biggest one, of course, was climate change. Okay, there were uh, various people going on streets, complaining, lots of things happening about the possibility of climate change if the world's temperature went up by two degrees. So that was a doomsday scenario, but it was not crisis management at the moment. There was also some concern about nuclear war with in the Middle East, in the Far East, with Trump and 
all his uh, negotiations or great negotiations happening, there was also that potential, but it was not considered immediate crisis management. There was also for economists and bankers, and there are many of you all who are in the, this field, there was also uh, concern that there are other technologies that were going to take over from the regular traditional bank exercise. And the big one was Bitcoin using blockchain technology. So essentially, there were some signs and we were worried about certain things happening even before COVID-19. Now, these changes that we were going through was called in the past generational change. Okay, it is called generational change. Things change over the generations. As you can see, uh, someone such as today, a child will watch a person called Daniel Tiger and um, Peppa Pig, okay? Uh, they will watch that instead of what we used to watch in the past, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. So these were happening, I mean, things change, okay? Then you had in the comic books, other than the movies, the comic books, Thor, the God of Thunder was already a female, okay? So it hasn't come to the movies yet. Okay, the Avengers Thor is still a man in the movies, but in the comic books, from where the movies come, it, Thor was a woman. And Superman was already dead in the comics. A person called Doomsday, in fact, had already killed him. So things are happening, generational change. What about out in space? We found that Pluto was too small to be considered a planet. So it was made not a planet. In fact, Pluto is actually smaller than our moon. And also we had Elon Musk uh, sending a Tesla out in space that is currently orbiting the sun. Okay, so these are things that we took to granted, we read in the papers, are interesting generational change. There was also, even before coronavirus, the rise of populism, okay? So-called democracies were actually dictators, okay? I won't name these people, but you can see these were people who were supposedly running democracies, but they were running it as dictatorships. And the situation that these countries have got into today with coronavirus, no one could have imagined the mismanagement that would have happened and the complete loss of lives that has happened because of this mismanagement. So there was this rise in populism around the world. There was, of course, Brexit. Brexit was going on for a long time. And in January uh, this year, can you imagine January this year, finally, uh, Britain and the European Union parted ways after 47 years. There was, of course, this tensions in the South China Sea, the Seven Dash Line and all these sort of things, where China was reclaiming a lot of islands and the Philippines were complaining, Vietnam was complaining, Indonesia was complaining, and USA and Australia, of course, complaining. But there was very good tensions happening. And as you know, these tensions are still significant. Then there was an interesting thing called the Golden Archers Theory. Okay, a person called Friedman, Thomas Friedman, a journalist, wrote an excellent book called the Lexus and the Olive Branch, where he essentially Lexus was globalization and Olive Branch was peace. So he said that globalization will bring peace. And he made this comment that no two countries with a McDonald's restaurant have ever gone to war with each other, okay, since they opened the McDonald's. So what he was trying to say was, the businessmen will know that war is bad for business and they will make sure that they won't go to war. So we had India and Pakistan fighting with each other, but never actually war. Although recently they threw stones at each other, but still didn't fire a bullet, okay. We had these situations, okay. So China had McDonald's, India has McDonald's, should be okay. Syria, no McDonald's, problem. Uh, North Korea, no McDonald's, problem. So this is the, McDon the Golden Arches theory was just about holding that there could be peace through globalization. Now, of course, the big issue that has come up has been happening for some time and has become a big issue now is the rise in state-based hacking. So today, almost everything in, in Australia, for example, is all linked to the internet. Okay, if you can get into the internet, you can shut our water down, make traffic congestions, put on and off electricity at will, all sorts of things can happen. 
and many states were accused and there are some states that were more accused than the others of actually promoting and sponsoring state-based hacking. Okay, so this of course caused a lot of concern with uh, Trump, actually not only Trump, even Australia and England now has prohibited Huawei from going into the 5G systems in their countries. And also recently TikTok was banned or at least Microsoft was asked to buy it over. Otherwise it can't run in the US, the US. And the big one just four days ago was that Trump said from next month, we are going to ban WeChat. Now that's a big one because 1.2 billion people will be left out. Okay, and it can go both ways. The Chinese market will not be open then to these American companies and vice versa. So you can see this whole thing of industrial espionage by the governments or state is causing these big tensions. And these have been happening for some time, but it has escalated after COVID-19. Okay, so these are some of the trends. Now we have done six of the new normals. Let's go on. Then there was this thing called the Me Too movement. Now, please don't think that just because you're in Indonesia or Philippines or Sri Lanka or India, you can ignore the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement was where there was significant issues about sexual harassment in the workplace. Of course, in many Western countries, lots and lots of big names, Harvey Weinstein and so on, have got accused and gone to jail and so on with this Me Too movement, okay? But in today's businesses, as businesses become such that there are many, many businesses where women are rising to positions of power and in fact can harass men, maybe the Me Too movement might become the Men Too movement, okay? Who knows? But there is a big, big issue of this Me Too movement. Okay, then we had President Obama telling everyone to be woke. We didn't know what this meant, woke, as he got his English wrong. But actually woke meant being socially aware. Being socially aware of what's happening was the word woke, okay? Knowledgeable about what is happening around the world. So Obama is telling people, he's coming from African words saying that you wake up to the world. Be woke became actually a word that was used. Okay, an adjective, in fact. So this whole movement of Me Too and Woke and so on, being socially aware, created a censorship culture. Okay, now there was also an extension of that to a culture of cancelled culture. Now, what's the difference between censored and cancelled? If there's one piece of work, for example, in a TV series, one particular episode has some reference to uh, slavery or black uh, words that should not be used and something like that, then you could censor that particular episode only. But it was much bigger to be canceled. Canceled means your entire body of works is no longer available. So they have canceled many people including Michael Jackson. They haven't been able to cancel Michael Jackson, sorry. They tried to cancel Michael Jackson after some pedophile uh, accusations were made, but Billboard said it, he's too big to cancel. But there are Kevin Spacey, Reza Bar, even Woody Allen they tried to cancel because of his uh, involvement with some uh, underage, his underage daughter whom he married later. So these are big issues. I mean, just imagine for a business and your entire portfolio is based on your royalties from your production of your movies or books or whatever, the whole works can get suddenly canceled because someone today felt that it is not a good thing to have this, uh, this uh, in their, based on today's uh, morals and values, not when they were actually made. Okay, so this has all culminated into this big thing called Black Lives Matter. Now, don't think that just because you're in a country that actually you might think you are closer to the black than the white, that this doesn't matter. Actually, it does. Into Australia, in fact, we have a really bad uh, history of how we treated the Aboriginal people in Australia. So the Black Lives Matter actually started in 2014, but actually today, it is a big movement, okay? It has been actually made into a big one after COVID-19, 
when people just want to go out, I think, and there were, there were protest marches against all uh, health regulations in all parts of the world. So Black Lives Matter. And that means that a lot of people who were considered heroes in the past were considered not very good because of their various past episodes, such as uh, supporting slavery, uh, racism, and so on. Even they tried to take down Winston Churchill's statue because Winston Churchill clearly had a very, very racist history. He, was, he didn't like Indians, for, for, okay, and his, all his writings were anti, and he starved two million people in India to send food to his troops in the West. So if they had to protect Winston Churchill with a box, okay, a steel box, so that his statue will not be defaced in England. It was defaced in other countries. So then there was a call for defunding the police. Now you might think that defunding the police, what does that mean? That do we not give any money to the police? No, actually what it means is if you look at old movies of America where the police are there, they're just in a normal uniform with a, black, uh, with a blue cap and so on. Just look at Police Academy, the movie, and look at what they are today in full battle gear, military, okay? And they come with essentially uh, armored vehicles. Why is that? Because the American government passed legislation that all military hardware can be bought by the police. And they gave police the money to buy military hardware. So today you find policemen who are dressed like military people. And that's what is meant by defund the police. Don't put so much money to make the police look like military, but use that money to do better schools and so on. So you have to understand what's happening in the business environment. And these things are going across the world. It's not only America. Then I've already mentioned blockchain. Blockchain was an electronic way of doing transactions down at the granular level where we can capture information and we can link it up at the granular level information together. Okay, and that of course gave rise to things like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and even Facebook tried its own version called Libra. It's slightly different to the blockchain technology, <clears throat> but essentially a different type of um, crypt uh, cur currency was put forward. So these are again concerns that the bankers had that now have become a little bit more concerning after COVID-19. <clears throat> okay, so essentially these are some of the things that happened before we had the COVID-19. It was gaining space, generation change at a much higher level was happening. Then of course we had the big bang, the new normal, the exact date that this happened is not very clear. In two, December 31st, the uh, WHO found that there were some statements in the press uh, by the Wuhan Municipal Health Council. On uh, 27 January, they urged countries to be careful about international travel, but it was only in, on the 11th of March that WHO announced that COVID-19 was a pandemic. But by that time, it was too late, okay? By that time, thousands of people through international travel had taken the virus to all corners of the earth. And today we are going through that. Today Australia is going through a second wave, okay, of return travelers uh, causing a second wave to come out. Okay, so once the COVID-19 became a pandemic, there were certain things that were directly applicable. And I think all of you know this, so I won't go too much into it. Flattening the curve essentially was where if you allow people, less people to get it, the amount of people might be the same, but you will be able to prevent the healthcare capacity. And that's essentially ventilators and in, in, uh, intensive care unit rooms uh, to be spread out amongst the population. So there was this issue of flattening the curve, travel restrictions, airlines are supposed to be full carriers of coronavirus to all parts of the world. Social distancing, you know, we have to keep 1.5 meters away from each other. Homeschooling, all of you for no every part of the world was in some way involved in, at some stage, homeschooling now. Self-quarantine, we have to put ourselves under self-quarantine and some of these were forced quarantines to stay at home at least for two weeks. Lockdowns, hotspots that made entire city. Now that's a picture of uh, Chinese, uh, city completely 
devoid of any traffic. Hotspots are where certain areas were considered bad and to be looked at. And of course, we had to all start living with masks, even playing with our children outside had to be with masks. Okay, and contact tracing. In Australia, we have a phone through system through our iPhones. In Singapore, it's much more sophisticated. In China, there's actually something that you do to say when you're going out and in from your own flat, all of these contact tracing was happening. And of course, the big issue of ventilators, ICUs, and finally, the silver bullet that we are all praying for, and that is a vaccine. Of course, Russia claims that it has got the first vaccine. Not too sure how many people are going to accept it. They're still not finished the testing, but it looks like the one, it should not be a race, but it looks like the one from Oxford University is most likely to be the one that might be the most um, safe and one that has been most proven. Okay, now that's things that directly were affected by the coronavirus, but so many things have started impacting us indirectly. The biggest issue that I want to talk about is the issue of frontline workers. Now we thought it is the medical people who are frontline workers. But when we all went into shutdown, we found that it was not only the medical people, it was so many others who were frontline workers. I mean, your people who are doing your cleaning, your cooking, your delivering of food, okay? All of these people caring for those in, in aged care facilities, all of these are part of our, our frontline workers. And unfortunately, if you leave aside the medical profession, they were earning very, very low salaries. Okay, so your hedge fund managers, even accountants, okay, the accountants are required for some things, but not essential workers in that sense. They were earning a much higher salary than the poor frontline workers. Okay, so the frontline workers, okay, these are the people who are truck drivers, taxi drivers, supermarket staff. In Australia, we had a great toilet roll runout where supermarket staff had to limit customers for to only two toilet rolls, okay? And I'm going to give a little plug to my son's toilet roll company. His company is called Who Gives a Crap? That's his toilet roll. They're online delivery of toilet rolls, okay? Half the, uh, share, half the profits go to charity. So last year, the amount of charity they gave was $700,000 to make uh, toilets and other things around the world. This year, his profits that half the profit that gave to charity was $5.3 million. That's how much of toilet paper sales went through the roof, just went up. Okay, so who gives a crap? Go online and have a look at that. Okay, so as I told you, this pandemic has exposed and accentuated inequities in the economic system. Those in white collar jobs can work from home, but essential frontline workers must continue to work and therefore at a greater risk of contacting COVID-19, all the while for poor pay. What happens to their leave? Do they get sick leave if they go sick? So now just uh, yesterday or day before, Australian government finally agreed that you don't have to prove that you got COVID-19 by working in the hospital. If, you get co if you're a hospital worker and you get COVID-19, you're automatically on a sick pay leave from the company, okay? So that's, but what about other countries? Okay, these are the biggest risk, okay? So you can see these are people who are really taking a lot of risks for very little pay, okay? Your three wheel driver, your taxi drivers, those in industries such as hospitality, this proportionately young female with black or brown skin, even in the USA, have borne the brunt of these, brunt, I should say, of these job losses. Okay, now of course the big one that is again indirect but happening in your home was the boom of Netflix and the YouTube. Okay, lockdowns of entire city created a new normal of access to news and entertainment. We couldn't get enough of the Netflix series about the news and so on. Okay, streaming searches, services such as Netflix and YouTube had a 50 fold increase in traffic. So as I told you, some businesses actually made a lot of money, did very well. Okay, now a lot of people got caught. In fact, I have got caught to this YouTube rabbit hole. If you look up the word YouTube rabbit hole, you'll find that it is when you look at one YouTube video 
and then you see something else that looks interesting and you see another YouTube video that follows and about one hour later you suddenly realize how why the hell am I watching this video when I started with something completely different before so this is called the YouTube rabbit hole you don't know where you're going and lots of people around the world with nothing to do staying at home got caught to the YouTube rabbit hole so of course this is great advertising opportunities for companies okay, to because people are stuck and looking at these sorts of things. Then of course the bad, vicious part of it was your fake news, <clears throat> where Facebook became fake book. Okay? Essentially confusing, conflicting, non-scientific information about COVID-19 origins, 3% conspiracies. Okay, so this is where you had people saying how great it is to use bleach or Clorox to get rid of coronavirus or saying how good hydroxychloroquine is. Now, lots of do doctors in India and Thailand and Sri Lanka use hydroxychloroquine, but it has not been scientifically proven. To tell people to just take it without any medical advice was crazy. And you know who advised people to do that. Okay, so the one that we are all involved in is working from home. Okay. There has been a new working from home culture, but remember that I have written an article about this in your On Target magazine. But just look at the issues, how to share, share Excel files from multiple locations without any broken links. These are big issues. Just emailing a file, you'll have five different people having five different versions of the file. So how can you share it without any broken links? boosting your internet bandwidth, suddenly everyone in the house, from your son doing the school or university to your wife who's working, are using bandwidth, building corporate networks that actually go beyond the corporation into people's houses. How do you do information security and data protection? Okay, is your information secure on a line that your wife has access to or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your toy boy or your son, whatever, has access to? And then what happens to workplace safety? Are you covered? If you fall down the staircase at your home while you're doing work, is it covered by workplace safety laws? So these are big issues of companies have to come to grips with in terms of working from home. Of course, today what we're doing now is our Zoom meeting. A Zoom culture has become one of the major shades of the new normal thanks to a profound resonance within business in the work from home environment. Zoom is also a big winner with millions of people forced to stay at home to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Okay, so people are doing not only business meetings, but they're doing trivia nights, birthday parties, quizzes, all on Zoom, often using the business account. Okay, so these are, of course, a big winner. It's gone huge. Okay, something like 50 to 64 increase in the downloads, okay? And finally, the last shade of the new normal in terms of politics and society is the family dynamics, okay? Of course, there has been the good part of it. The families have got together, they've gone walking together, exercising together, but there are others who have just sat in there in front of their televisions and become what they call couch potatoes and just eating, snacking while watching or going down the YouTube um, rabbit hole. But unfortunately, there is the vicious part of it as well, where family violence reporting, especially in Australia, not too sure about other countries, has significantly increased, okay, family violence. I think it's reported globally that there is an increased incident, okay? You can stay with your wife or husband for so long, but not more longer than that. These have also come about. So these are 35 of the 50 shades that I will be talking about today, that I've talked about today. Okay, so in summary, in this part one of a three-part series, the political and social alternate reality that the world finds itself are covered. Okay, now what has happened really is that there was a movie called Back to the Future. In part one, this person, Michael J. Fox, goes back in time to 1955 from 1983. In part two, he says the thing wrong and he goes to an alternate reality. And you see this scene in the movie where the doc is showing how they've deviated to an alternate reality. It seems that we are in this alternate reality in part two of Back to the Future. 
Where in that movie, interesting, that came out in about 1985, right? There is a thing called Biff Towers, not Trump Towers. And this person who the villain was actually modeled after Donald Trump, the same hairstyle. So are we in part two of Back to the Future? Let's hope we can get back to part one of the Back to the It won't be the same, but at least we can live with it. Okay, so significant changes are already happening. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, these changes were supercharged during the COVID-19 pandemic, creating lasting shades of new normal. When the pandemic hit, further shades were added to all our regular lexicon that were both directly related to efforts to reducing infections and to forced lifestyle changes. Or in all 35 shades, the new normal were covered. Okay, now what does, in the next part, in next week I'll cover crazy nomics, but what does this mean for companies? Okay, so the three parts of the article taken as a whole discuss the 50 shades that we have to look at, and it shows the interconnection that range from economic, political to finance, and sustainability and more. Okay, it also looks at how we can look at our external environment our opportunities and threats. So essentially, as I told you right at the start, we have to understand the external environment to look at how, what are the opportunities and threats, and then see if we have the strengths to take advantage of the opportunities as Zoom did, or the weaknesses to try to keep away our threats. Now, some of the things that you learn in the CMA program is, very, very important to do this. Now, here is some, I'm not saying that I fully agree with it, but it looks about right at what they expect after COVID-19 finishes, who the winners and losers are going to be. You can see some obvious ones like food delivery, video conferencing and so on, becoming winners after COVID-19. And the losers are the obvious one, airlines, hotels, restaurants, conferences, or at least conference where people go face to face, these are going to be con considered users. Now, don't worry if you are one of these in the loser category. What this means is you have now an opportunity to think about restructuring, thinking about something else. Okay, where can we go? Where can we do? You can't do the same thing all the time, so what can we do? So, one of the greatest tools that we talk about in CMA program to do this is this NSOF matrix, okay? So if you look at this, we have new ma existing markets and existing products. Say you're in the travel business. Well, that market is almost dead and may not resurrect completely after COVID-19 is over. So now the existing market, that's your existing customers. Can you give some new products? Well, if they are related to travel, Again, that might be problematic. Let us say you are doing airline bookings and tours. What if you do adventure tours? What if you do specialty trips? They are still related. They are new products that you're having, but they are related to existing customers who may not want to travel. You might think about trying to sell your existing products to new markets. Okay, Existing products of your tours and so on to new markets. You can go to areas where travel restrictions have been uh, have been uh, removed, where there are some interesting things happening, where they're waiting for people to come. So you might consider taking your products to new markets. But one of the things that you have to think about is, can we get out of our current business completely? Should we diversify? Now, one of my um, students in the um, CMA class uh, in Sri Lanka, he was in the ho hotel business. He was organizing tours for, um, for Australian um, to our agencies, he was doing the local travel part of it. When the Easter bombings came and all the uh, all the hotels, you know, had a problem and there was no one coming to Sri Lanka, he used that time to diversify into going to hotels and saying, "Look, no one is coming. Why don't you modify your hotel and why don't you become interior design, do a better thing for your hotels?" And then they learned how to do interior design and took that technology or what they learned into the condominium market. So now they have two business lines. They have the travel, which again has stopped because of coronavirus, but the condominium market is still going on. There's an interior design company. 
So think outside the box. And that is the beauty of the NSOF matrix because it forces you to think where can we go to? Okay, especially once the coronavirus has reduced, the, the dangers have reduced. Now there are two things that I can advise you before I finish as how to do this. And that is <clears throat> the type of businesses that people want can be categorized into two categories. The help me businesses and the show me businesses. And the ideal is if you can have a help me business within a show me business. So what is the help me business? Help me ideas are business ideas which aim to solve a current pain point. I have a problem, can you solve it? Okay, so TripAdvisor, people are saying, how do we know this hotel is good? How do we know that this place is nice? Okay, why don't we get independent verification of this? And that is where TripAdvisor came in, to give trusted travel information. Don't believe the, the hotel brochures or the airline tour packages, look at TripAdvisor. So that is the pain point. How do I get trusted information? TripAdvisor. Show me ideas is, Things that we already do, but done in a different way, okay? Enlighten customers about how things also can be done. So Uber is a good example. We always had taxis. We never thought about the fact that we had all cars at home that were doing nothing. And Uber found an alternate way to taxis with their platform. Of course, in a lot, lot of countries, this has taken off even amongst the three wheelers and so on. So these are the interesting areas. If you are in a place that I just showed you as a loser, okay? Don't worry. Think how you can change, diversify, get into another area, okay? And here are two areas that you have to sit down with your company, with your management, brainstorm, and try to say how we can do it, okay? Travel businesses, one way you can do complete diversify is start making packaging company, make it a logistics company, okay? Rather than taking human beings who could get COVID-19, send packages. You have the same technologies in the same context, you know the networks, use the packaging. Okay, so these are ideas that you will throw up if you are in these industries. If you're in a winner industry, make best advantage and grow that industry. Okay, so that's a little bit of advice for you. Okay, so I've just gone a little over time, but thank you very much for your time. And now we will take up some uh, questions.